Contention. Critique. Conjecture. Conclusion. The Huddle with paperplusoffice.co.nz. Shop online anytime. They're open 24-7. Josie Pagani is with us once again. Hello, Josie. Hi, Larry. And uh, Cameron Slater from Whale Oil. G'day, Cam. Hi, Larry. Josie, this issue to you first. Uh, the asset sales, the largest ever petition to be presented to Parliament, will result in a referendum being held on the government's asset sales program. I say the referendum is the election, uh, and if you don't like it, you vote the government out. What do you say? Well, yeah, I just heard your, your interview with Russell Norman. And putting aside the last election, and I know he argues that, that uh, most parties voted, had a, had, went into the election with a promise not to sell the assets and that they had the majority. Put all of that aside. In my mind, things have cha- there's quite a bit that's changed since the last election. The first thing is that Mighty River's been a big, fat flop and the share price was too low. So whether or not this is the right time to keep selling has to be a question that you ask. Second, uh, solid energy is a basket case, so that's now off the shelves. That's not for sale. Um, the polls are clearly showing that people are against it, and it passed with a one-vote majority. In comparison oh, to the anti, in comparison that. to the anti-smacking uh, legislation, which passed with John Key's support, Cam and Helen Clark. Oh, so all of that majority. aside, all of that aside, it seems to me uh, that you have to let the referendum go go through. But I, but I agree What's with you, law? Larry. I don't want to spend thirty million dollars on it, so I reckon do it at the election. John Key can put the sale on hold because I don't think this is the best time to sell, even if you support. Well, all right, sale. okay. Mighty River Power. Actually, the reason the price is down is because the government got greedy. Treasury got greedy, and the price was too high. But it, it should come back. But we don't know. Uh, who would know? Anyway, Cam, what's your take on this? Look, I'm sick of hearing these whiny greens and people like Josie go on about one vote majority, one vote. We live in a parliamentary democracy. That is what the voters dished up to us, a one-vote majority, like it or lump it. Are they saying that when they're in government and they have a one-vote majority that they won't pass laws? It's rubbish. It's complete and utter bollocks, and I'm sick of hearing it from them. They are attempting to relitigate an election, and they're doing it with the taxpayers' money, and it's an absolute travesty that they're doing this. I haven't seen Russell Norman... Uh, clamouring for the anti-smacking legislation to be repealed um, on the basis of a referendum. I haven't seen Russell Norman clamouring for increased sentences um, from our judges as a result of a referendum. You know, it is just arrant nonsense from these guys. But, Cam, what's the hurry? Put all of that aside, and I know you find it all very whiny and horrible, but, I mean, put all of that aside. Is this the best time to, to continue with the sale it's of the It's irrelevant. The Greens... The Is it irrelevant? I thought no, we were going to get seven billion dollars no, from you, this. You, we're clearly you're, not. You're diverting, um, Josie, because we have a referendum that the Greens and Labor have now forced us into. If I was the government, what I'd be doing is either one of two things. I'd be doing a postal ballot and I'd be making sure it lands at the same time as the voting papers for the local body. So and I put the assets in the on bin. hold. And, no, you, can't on put hold. The, you cannot put them on hold. The government was elected with a mandate to sell assets. So they sell can, at any cost, so even if it's too low, any they, money. If they put it on hold for that reason, that's a different matter. Putting it on hold because Russell Norman's whinging about his flag being stolen right, for some so other reason. you would support is, putting it on hold if we're not going to make $7 billion. It has to make fiscal sense. Yeah, exactly. Right? And no it problems with that, but that's got nothing to do with the, with the referendum. The All referendum right, now the referendum has to be held aside. by law. So the two options are do it in the middle of the local body poli- um, elections or bury it in Christmas when yeah, no I one knows about Cam, it. I agree with Larry. I think we should put it, put, it, put it on hold because it doesn't make any fiscal sense. Well, I didn't say that. Yes, you did. <laughs> you did. So you go, said that's that for the government to decide, not for a referendum to decide. All right, we'll come back in a moment. Cameron Slater, Jesse Pagani on the huddle. It's now 14 to 6. Larry Williams Drive with the new ANZ, the bank that gives you more. Back on the huddle, Cameron Slater and Josie Pagani. Cameron, issue number two to you, the Labour Party candidate uh, roadshow. It seems that Jones, uh, Mr Jones has made some gains, that it's too early to make a call on this. What are you seeing? I, I, I hope, uh, for the sake of the country, that Shane Jones does make a good play of this and gets across the line. John Key might not like me saying that, but that's too bad. For the good of the country, I think Jane, Shane Jones is showing some modicum of sensibility. I didn't like his brown shirts comment about um, you know, the, the supermarkets, but uh, actually refuse, refusing to enter into the ludicrous bidding war as 
David Cunliffe and Grant Robertson tried to head off the Communist Party for, for you know, the bids of, of the hard left. It's quite astonishing to watch. Josie? Yeah, I, it reminds me a little bit of when I, when I was at university, Larry, and I was a young radical lefty. I actually won an election once by saying, I'm more left-wing than him. And they voted for me. So there was a little bit of competition going on there between David Cunliffe and, and um, Grant Robinson. And I think Grant went into that uh, at, at the weekend thinking, right, I can't be the Diet Coke version of, of David Cunliffe. You know, think, Cunliffe was pure calories. Grant ever had a <laughs> glass of Diet Coke past his lips from the I've got to be, I've, yeah, well, that's right. I've got to be, I've got to be seen as, le- as, as, left, as left-wing as him. And the problem with that, as Tracy Watkins pointed out in the Dominion today, is there's a danger that you win the battle, you win the, the the, the Labour mm-hmm. Party nomination, you lose the war. Um, and I, and like Cam, I mean, I think Shane suddenly started talking like somebody who was going to appeal to the middle. And I loved his comment where someone asked him if he was going to, what he would do about competing for votes of the Greens. And he said, I'm going for votes in Middle Earth, not Flat Earth. Uh, so I mm. think there's a real competition here. And suddenly people have noticed Paddy Gower at TV3, Corin Dan, John Armstrong, they've all gone well. Wow. You know, Shane had a Bobby Dazzler of a of a weekend. You'd be sort of stuck though, Josie, because you'd be quite uh, enamoured with the man band because you might actually get a chance of getting into Parliament. No, I'm the wrong kind of woman, Cam. That's the problem. Oh, as, right, as another great quote from Shane. <laughs> I have, he does have great quotes. He said that uh, when he was asked about his problem with getting support from women, he said, "Mate, I'm going after the support of women who read Women's Weekly, not Jermaine Greer." <laughs> <laughs> and okay. I would say I'm probably in that category. All right. Yes. Thank you, and uh, we'll talk again. That is Josie Pagani and Cameron Slater. On the Huddle, Newstalk ZB, it's now 10 to 6.